Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor, and today we're going to be working on the claws, the feet, the feather around the feet, and we're going to be doing a, a lot of epoxy work. This is the final step before we paint. Here I have my micro carver. Now this is for smaller bits. This is a upgrade from a Dremel. I have a Dremel, I have this micro carver, and I have a Fordham. So these are the three different categories of rotary carvers. This is a little ceramic bit and it's disc shape and I'll be going in and doing the deeper cuts with this. Now this disc, because of the size, won't fit into everywhere. So I'll be using different size ceramic stones to get in here to create different depths of texture different thickness lines with different stones and then I will be burning it which will add a whole nother uh, dimension and size to the grooves and, and cuts that are in the wood to make it look more realistic more fur-like and that's these feathers to protect the legs are more like hairs or fur-like than feather-like but they're feathers Here we're putting in the smaller bit. You can see that quick change is very nice. It's nice uh, to be able to switch that out really quick. And you can get, I, I left the shaft extended out a little bit so I could really reach in and hit all those areas. And now we'll go in and burn. Got about a medium heat going there. Uh, a little, a little hotter than the rest of the bird. You can see the the how light brown on top of the head those lines are where it was burned lightly, and these are a little heavier to show a little deeper, thicker texture of feathers here. Now there's a wide variety of burning tips that you can get to, to start off with a skew. And that's what I have right here, uh, especially for doing any kind of birds. The skew tip is probably the most used. Uh, and I would recommend, because you have so many little tight places to get into, I would recommend that and then experiment with other tips. I have several, but I use the skew about 85, 90% of the time. Here are those pumpkins I carved. The stems here are epoxy. They were left over from different things I did with the bird. And you see how some of them curl around or, or change direction. Um, you'd never be able to do that with wood. They would just snap off. Now here are epoxy claws that I rolled out. And this is how I do them. I, I lay them right on a dowel. And that gives them a, a natural, easy curve. And I just lay them all on there. Let them dry. So they, they become hard. And they just pop off of the wood. As long as you don't mash them in too hard. And uh, and here you see, I laid them all out and some of them, yeah, they're too hooked. This one looks like a question mark. I don't know if people will use that. And oh, here's a nice one. And there's another nice one. So I do a whole bunch of them and then pick from them. And here's what they look like. Just take a dab on the end of each toe of fresh epoxy and stick those hardened claws into it and look at that 
Looks nice. Now I'm gonna do the pads on the feet and I will wet the wood a little bit. It seems to help the epoxy stick. And then mash it down. I have one of these little silicone brushes. I've never used one before, but it works really good with this uh, epoxy. It doesn't stick to it. It just tap it into a little, I have a little water bottle cap full of water and I just tap it into that right there and it smooths down really nice. This is Magic Sculpt, two part epoxy. And the more I use this stuff, the more I like it. It is just wonderful stuff. Adding a little bit of texture. The pads of the feet of, of the cloth, they, the pads have, they're very textured. Um, they almost have like little triangle, triangular teeth. Um, you wouldn't want one of these owls grabbing your finger because uh, not only are the claws sharp, but the texture on the inside of their feet is extremely uh, coarse and, and have like bite to them. They have really like tooth to them. And so like anything else, you know, the more you work with a new material, the better you're going to get. Uh, I, I have not been working with uh, two-part epoxy all that long. And the more I use it, the more comfortable I get with it. Uh, I used to use a, a two-part epoxy, but I had to use... Uh, solvents with it and it was just such a pain that I I would do projects that didn't require it but with uh, this magic sculpt using water because it's water soluble uh, I just can't praise this stuff enough it's uh, changed the way I do sculpture changed the way I do wood carving too so the magic sculpt, and when you combine part A and part B together, you'll have, oh, depending on how you mix it, how much hardener you put into it, uh, 15 minutes to 30 minutes, the way I mix it, uh, before it starts getting too hard to actually shape easily. So what I do is, as I always have other little projects like the pumpkins in the background there, and uh, and that's what I did. I was working on the undertail area where the fluffy feathers would be, and I had a, a little extra, and so I just popped them right on top of those pumpkins right there. Um, I've tried doing vines on pumpkins before out of wood and because the vines would change direction uh, you you would run into the hazard of them breaking off because of you'd get cross grain so you'll never run into that problem with the two-part epoxy it doesn't have any grain at all it's just solid like a plastic resin So we got the bottom pads of the feet done and now I'm going in here and the owl has looks like kind of hair like 
feathers, fur-like feathers, across the top of the toes. There's not a whole lot there, but there is some there. A little bit of the color of the foot shines through. We'll, we'll uh, make sure that happens when we're, when we're painting. But there are definitely fur-like feathers that come across the top of those toes. So we're going to texture those in and come back and burn those in. Yeah, this song is called Man's Best Friend. Reminds me of a dog just like trotting right beside you, wagging his tail. Listen to the song for a second. I just took this cutter bit and just came down here to kind of break up the big clumps and make it look more natural and when I did think I knocked one of the claws off it's right here knocked it right off at the base so um, easy enough fix I got some five minute epoxy this is uh, JB weld I really like this stuff. It's super strong. Cures in five minutes. You do have to work kind of quickly with it. I'm just mixing part A, part B together. I like to use like a shiny surface. This is a, a like popsicle box and we just mix it really well using a toothpick and one reason why I kind of like this for uh, the repair is it is kind of sticky, it's not liquid. So it has a little bit of, like you can see stick and initial hold to it. All this will be painted right over top of And so I'll keep an eye on this. It'll start to set and become hard to move in about five minutes. All right, so it was this one right here. And I took advantage of a little extra glue this one was looking a, a little bit unstable, so I got both of that. That's a very strong bond. I won't be worrying about those, those two anymore. So when you're mixing epoxy, 
uh, to make sure you have a good bond and you mix it up well, leave your mixing stick, a little toothpick or something in it. And when you see that it's holding that good, it, it literally ripped up the paper when, when this comes off, you know that that's, it's, uh, it's holding, it's firm, and we'll set within the next hour. All right, so when you, when you put the epoxy on in areas like over the beak, they have this clump of hair that, that kind of comes out here, right by their eyes, covers over their beak. So I, I put it on there, I put the epoxy on there, and I just used the knife to kind of pull in some really fine lines and then I used a cutter bit to come back in and cut some more lines. And the variety of, of cuts in here is what really makes it look more like realistic feathers that are grouped together. That's how you get your looks for feather or fur or whatever. Use uh, different types of cutting uh, tools that are different thicknesses. Um, this adds a lot to it, this space around the beak. And all I did there was to insert this knife and pull out, pull out, creating this space. Um, and that really helps with the realism. And down here, um, the epoxy went on in, in, a, in a ball. Um, a, a little less than a golf ball in size and and then pulled it out with the exacto blade and then cut up in it and lifted in several areas and that created kind of a clumpy area and then I came back in with this and just cut lines through it breaking up the clumps and it kind of gives it a um, very fluffy, um, like fur-like feathers, but this guy's coming down. There's a lot of wind, there's a lot of disruption. Um, so as the those fluffy little feathers are being blown out um, by not only the wing flaps and the landing and the wind hitting the tail and so that's what I'm attempting to do there. Once we paint it we'll see if we accomplished our goal. All right be sure to check us out next time when we will be mounting these wings, sealing and painting the bird. Please like, share, subscribe and I'll see you next time.